Welcome to the CSUN video learning module on unit conversions. This is the first of two parts. My name is Simon Garrett. In this video, we'll do some math, so have your calculator handy. We'll practice the sorts of calculations you learned in class about unit conversions. Before you start, you should review your textbook and lecture notes on base units, SI prefixes, scaled units, and unit conversions. You'll be expected to know the SI prefixes, their symbols and values in examinations and also here. Are you ready? Here's your first example. How many meters are there in one kilometer? Pause the video here and try it. The answer is 10 to the 3, or 1,000 meters. Either format is correct. Here's how we figured this one out. First write down the scaled unit equal to the scaled unit. Now replace one of the prefixes, in this case the K, with its value. See? It doesn't matter which K, the first or the second you replace. This question was a scaled unit, kilometers, to base unit, meters, calculation, that we can figure out by replacing one of the unit prefixes by its value. Here's the next question. Notice that this is also a scaled unit, gigabyte, to base unit, byte calculation. Try it. Pause the video here while you do. The correct answer is 10 to the 9 bytes. Again, write the scaled unit equal to the scaled unit. Replace one of the prefixes with its meaning, in this case, 10 to the 9. You should be aware that, from a significant figure point of view, both the number 1 and the 10 to the 9 in these equalities have an infinite number of significant figures. Seems odd, but 1.000 gigabytes is exactly equal to 1.000 times 10 to the 9 bytes. Exactly because they are defined this way. It's very important that you can convert between base and scaled units, so we'll try two more examples. How many volts are there in one microvolt? Try it. Pause the video here. Got it? The answer is 10 to the minus 6 volts. We wrote down one scaled unit equal to one scaled unit. Then we replace the prefix with its meaning. One microvolt is equivalent to 1 times 10 to the minus 6 volts. All these calculations follow the same route. Question. How many grams are there in one milligram? Pause the video here until you have the answer. The answer is 10 to the minus 3 grams or one thousandth of a gram. Again, we'll write one milligram equals one milligram. We'll replace one of the milli prefixes with its value. Clearly, these questions are impossible unless you know the SI prefixes and their values. It is very important that you memorize these. Actually, we've developed something that is called a conversion factor. When one quantity equals another, expressed in different units, we have a conversion factor. So a conversion factor is the same amount of something but expressed in two different units, and it allows us to convert between those two units. One milligram and one times 10 to the minus three grams are exactly the same amount. If you hold these quantities in your hand, they would be identical. So a conversion factor ratio has this value of unity. Multiplying by such a ratio does not change the quantity, but does change its units. So let's try working with conversion factors. Write down the conversion factor between nanoliters and liters. Pause the video here. The answer is 1 nanoliter equals 1 times 10 to the minus 9 liters. How do we solve this question? It follows the same method we have already learned. Write down 1 nanoliter equals 1 nanoliter. 
then replace nano with its meaning, and you have the conversion factor. Note the previous line, one nanoliter equals one nanoliter, is not a conversion factor because the units are not different. Let's try another one. Write down the conversion factor for micrometers and meters. This should be straightforward by now. Pause the video here and work out your answer. Did you get one micrometer equals one times 10 to the minus six meters? Really, this is only one of three possible ways to write this conversion factor. It can also be written as ratios like these. These ratios are much better to use in unit conversion calculations. Remember, a conversion factor has the same quantity numerator and denominator, just expressed in different units. Both of these conversion factors are correct as they stand, but only one of them will be useful in a particular type of unit conversion calculation. How many meters are there in one centimeter? Pause here. The answer is 10 to the minus 2, or 0 0.01 meters. The strategy is to write one scaled unit equals one scaled unit like before, then to replace one of the centi with its meaning of 10 to the minus 2. We have our answer. We can even write two more conversion factors. These are ratios, one version and its upside down version. To illustrate a very common student problem area, let's try the next question. How many centimeters are there in one meter? Wait a second, didn't we already answer this? Read the question carefully and compare it to the one on the left. Now try it. Pause the video here while you do. The answer is 100 centimeters. If you didn't get it right, let's work it out. This is still a conversion between a base unit and a scaled unit, but it is more involved than before. We have to write out a calculation to solve it. Again, we'll start with meters, and we want an answer in centimeters. So we'll write down what we're given in the question, one meter, and multiply it by a conversion factor, shown here in green. We'll choose one of the two from the left-hand question. We'll choose the one that gives us the correct units for the answer. Notice that when we multiply by this conversion factor, the units cancel. This is the only way we know which conversion factor to choose. Meters cancels with meters, and it gives us the answer in centimeters. This process of canceling units is called dimensional analysis. How many picoliters are there in one liter? Pause here and try the answer. The answer is 10 to the 12 picoliters. Ready? First we'll write down two conversion factors in the form of ratios, pico meaning times 10 to the minus 12. And then we'll set up the calculation. First, write down the given. In this case, we are given one liter. We are asked to find the number of picoliters, so the answer must be in picoliters. We'll choose the appropriate conversion factor. Multiplying the terms and make sure that the units cancel appropriately. See? Our knowledge is not restricted to whole numbers either. Try this question. Pause the video here while you work out the answer. The answer is 9.44 times 10 to the 10 picoliters. Did you get it? Actually, the equation is set up exactly the same as before, but where we previously wrote one liter, we now write 0 0.0944 liters. So using conversion factors is much more powerful than you might think initially. It not only allows us to convert one centimeter into meters, but it also allows us to convert any number of centimeters into meters, or any number of meters into centimeters. Let's finish with two more examples. 
What is 0.091 meters in millimeters? Read the question carefully. What units are given and what units are required for the answer? Pause here and work out your answer. The answer is 91 milliliters. Excuse me, 91 millimeters. First write down the two possible conversion factors as ratios. Each one must contain meters and millimeters, the units given and the units required. Next, we'll write, we'll write down what is given and multiply it by one of the two conversion factors, choosing the correct one based on dimensional analysis. The correct answer is 91 millimeters. Last one, convert 110 volts to kilovolts. Pause now and work out your answer. You should have 0 0.110 kilovolts. Again, we'll write down two conversion factors for volts and kilovolts. Eventually, you'll be able to skip this step and go straight on to the next, but for now, we'll leave it in. Then we'll write down what we know and multiply it by one of the conversion factors, making sure units cancel appropriately to give us the answer. Well done. By this point, the previous example should have reinforced your calculation skills converting between base and scaled units. Let's summarize. Except in the simplest cases, you will need to create your own conversion factor, a ratio with the same quantity numerator and denominator, denominator expressed in different units. The conversion factor will contain the units given and those sought. Always write down what you know and then multiply by the conversion factor, making sure units cancel properly. Note we have only converted between base and scaled units so far. Converting between scaled and scaled units extends these ideas and will be dealt with in part two.